Hang on. Stop attacking the Dalek! You were working at Marvel and I was. then unceremoniously dumped along. Yeah, well, as I say, my own fault really. I, I Empire built and then when Panini came in they didn't like Empire Builders. So I kind of I kind of talked myself out of a job there and I promoted Gary Gillett already into being the editor of Doctor Who magazine and Marcus Hearn was editing Hammer and there were a couple of other mags there. Um, and I was just kind of like lord of it all and they went we don't need any lords um so they got rid of me and that's fair enough evil people so i went to work uh in games magazines i'm sure i've said this before no, I know. and um deja vu. <laughs> <laughs> so i went to work for a playstation magazine yeah. uh playstation plus when playstation was first launched okay and um, that was quite interesting because i know nothing about computer games at all absolutely nothing i went in there with my skills skills um as, as an editor, it, it's as well. I wasn't the editor. I was a production editor on the magazine, but it was it was my skills within magazine production, uh, which is why I got a job there, not because I knew the subject at all. And I was there for eighteen months, perhaps just under eighteen months, I think. Did you um, learn anything about PlayStation? No, no, not in the slightest. Um, it really was quite alarming. I learned an awful lot more about magazine production, which was very beneficial to me. But I, I would sit there, and these guys would be sitting there playing their PlayStations, and they were absolutely brilliant. And I would sit for hours watching them play the games and getting... No, uh, seriously, quite vicariously enjoying the game through not playing it, but watching them play it. The only games I ever learned to play were Doom, which I absolutely fell in love with and I still play... I've still got a PlayStation 1 and I still play Doom and Final Doom on that. It's the only games I've ever owned. Do you ever unlock the Doctor Who levels? Uh, on, on, on Yeah, I'm sure there's a Doctor Who level on Doom. I think there probably is on the internet, but not on the actual No, no, disc. apparently it's a secret uh, a secret level. On yeah, the we're game. not on April the 1st. Um, and I learned to play Worms, <laughs> uh, which I loved. And that was it. For 18 months, that's all I managed to, to ascertain. And, and occasionally, they would say to me, do you want to review one of the games? And I'd be like... No! It's a lovely square shape. Yeah, it looks I, I, good I, when you open disc the box. And, and I put it in and no music comes out of it. It's, uh. um, but they did. I reviewed a couple of games and it was quite interesting reviewing games actually from the point of view of someone who wasn't um, cynical and wasn't uh, experienced in playing games. And there were a couple of games they got me to play deliberately because I really would be treating them as if. They were kind of beginner level PlayStation games, and therefore it was quite good having a beginner level person yeah. going, Oh, actually, this is quite easy to work. Oh, this is. And so all my scores for usability and, and all this sort of stuff would actually be quite genuine. Mm. Um, and I did that for about 18 months, and then I went off and did a little bit more freelance, and then I went to work for a soap magazine. Um, soap magazine? Inside Soap. Um, all about soap what? operas. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, is and that I, still around? Yes, yes. Yeah, it's oh. massive, massively popular. It's a, one of the biggest selling magazines in the country. I've never heard of um, it. Oh, it's, you'll find it in every supermarket and everything. It's fantastic. But I didn't last very long there. Um, I was there for about eight, nine months. Uh, and then Big Finish started up. There, there's a crossover period. Big Finish started, probably I'd been at Inside Soap a couple of months and Big Finish was just kicking off. So I, to start at Big Finish when we were doing the Benny stuff, I was doing a bit Inside Soap and then Big Finish was beginning to grow in my free time. And then I just thought, you know what, I'm so much happier being freelance and I wasn't enjoying working at Inside Soap at all. Um, was it a subject matter that just didn't interest No, 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 I love the subject matter, that's why I went there. I love soap operas. No, it was a personality clash. I, my life is full of personality clashes, and you'll realise this. Um, so it was it was mutually agreed between myself and the editor that, that I should leave. Um, <laughs> it was quite fun. Uh, but it timed in well with Big Finish starting, so suddenly now, I could devote myself to Big Finish. Let me just pull you back now, because that, that's obviously of interest to me, and of course a lot of the viewers out there. Big Finish itself, where did it begin? I mean, was it, was the idea with you, or was it with was one of Jason, the other guys? Well, yeah, Jason A. Gallery, or? Where did it begin? Um, I suppose it began in its rawest sense. Uh, when the TV movie came out, and I'd done the novelisation of the TV movie, and I knew the people at BBC Worldwide because of that, and I said to Jason, why don't we see if we can get a licence to do Doctor Who and Audio, because it was something we'd done before. Um, on an amateur basis um, and uh, so we did we went to them and said look we could do this we know what we're doing blah blah and they said no they weren't remotely interested in licensing out yeah. Doctor Who on audio or any other way that was fine so having got that idea in our head that we could do this Jason and I said well what else could we do science fiction wise that's audio because it's 
a passion that the two of us and Nick Briggs had and still have um, and so we got the Bernice stuff went to I went to Virgin and said look would you be interested in licensing us Bernie Summerfield as, a, as an audio project and they said if you can square it with Paul Cornell which we did instantaneously um, that's a really good idea so that's what we did and, and so we needed a company and Jason said well actually I've got a company set up that's sitting here doing nothing it's called Big Finish um, it's never been used for anything but I had to set up a company at some point and that was the name I chose he named it after a Stephen Moffat episode of Press Gang, I think. Um, <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> it's called, the, the episode's called The Big Finish, and Jason loved Press Gang, so he just used that name. Um, and so there we were. I had a, a company ready set, and we set off, and we, we established the Bernie Sumfield stuff. And as a result of that, a year or so later, the BBC got in touch with us direct and said, we've had this brilliant idea about doing Doctor on audio, and we've heard what you've done. Would you like to have the rights to do Doctor Who and audio and Jason and I sort of I think our brains are going we had this conversation with you a year ago but instead we just went oh, what a great idea yeah, that's a great idea let's do it but let's I mean you must, there must have been some part of your mind which was saying the Benny Summerfield stuff is dead it's our audition piece for Doctor Who no because I almost assumed nope. that was the case nope. actually no I, I think we'd, we'd given up on the idea of Doctor Who we, we wanted it but we'd been shot down. So no, we this was this was us doing something we just thought was it not no, it wasn't an audition piece. I think it was possibly a case of us saying we want to show people what you can do with science fiction on audio. But I don't think having been told no we couldn't do Doctor Who, I don't think we said, Well, we'll show you we can do something and then you're bound to give us Doctor Who. I think they made it quite clear they didn't want to do Doctor Who. So we weren't sitting down thinking, OK, this is going to be our audition piece for Doctor Who. No, we, with Benny was Benny. We were going to do this for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then they got hold of it and they called us in and said, oh, we've listened to this. We think this is a really good way of doing science fiction on audio. Um, how would you like to do it? And we went, yes, please. Uh, so cutting long story short, lots of contracts, blah, 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 sign this, do this, pay for this, blah, blah. Um, we had a license to make Doctor Who and off we went. You, it must have been a dream come true. It was one of the most exciting moments of my life, in all seriousness, it really was. I'm, I'm never sure which is more exciting, that, the, the, the word yes coming out of Jason's mouth on that meeting at the BBC, or the day when we were recording Sirens of Time and Nick was directing Peter Collins Sylvester in the little studio oh, bit. And Jason and I were outside in the green room. And I know we couldn't hear what was going on in there, but there was just this, this strange synergy moment. I think we were probably sat in complete silence in the green room. And I just looked up and I caught Jason's eye. And we just looked you straight in the eye and I just went, we've done it. We're making Doctor Who. And he went, I know. And that was just like, <laughs> oh, we've done it. Um, and I never looked back. Best, best thing in the world. I've got to tell you this, because a few years ago, um, I had pretensions about being an actor. And um, I, I picked out two sort of um, things from the stage at the time, and I sent them off. One was to Big Finish, and one was for, the, uh, for a, um, a Hungarian action movie. <laughs> <laughs> and I How got, was that Hungarian I, well, action I, movie? I, I had a call back for both, you see, so I, mean, I, could, I only had 50 quid, so I basically could only get to London once and, uh, in that month, so basically I went to the hung Hungarian audition, so you didn't rather come than and, Big Finish. So you didn't come and see us in the, in the upstairs bar of um, the, the Yorkshire Grey pub in, in London? That's where we did our first auditions, which is all from that stuff we did in the I stage. Just, I, th I think it was simple for me. I just couldn't get an actual en enough money together to have two trips to London. So it had to be one or the other. And it just happened. I'd heard a lot of rumours about sort of fake um, companies that were, you know, making you pay to go up to your auditions. Uh, and and stuff. you still get them today, unfortunately. Yeah. Yes. And um, but no, we were real. Uh, well, yes. And, and you missed your chance. I know it's you a terrible thing. You could have been terrible. You yes. could have been Charlie Pollard uh, or, or Evelyn Smythe. Do you know I do look very good in a Victorian smock. So I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yes, we did. We did these lovely auditions, and this is how we we got quite a large number of our cast actually, because pro actors were willing to come and audition for us. And in this bizarre situation, we were in this upstairs room in a pub in, in central London, which is a marvelous pub, um, and people would come up and read stuff for us, and we'd tape it. We sat there with a the old Denon cassette tape recorder, going and go. And pressing play and record so that we could go home because uh, I think uh, Jason and I were there I can't remember whether Nick was at the auditions or not whether it was just myself and Jason um, but I do remember us going back a couple of days later probably to 
Briggs's house and sitting and listening to, the, to everything we taped back and going that person's really good that person's really good that person um, and that's how we got a lot of our actors for the first couple of years was, was out of those positions we did that two or three more times during the course of my time at Big Finish um, because it you know it's an audition process and it's a very good one but you always want to take people I'm assuming because it's very e sorry it's very easy when someone young beautiful and attractive walks through the door and you turn around and look at Jason's eyes that are sort of on stalks out here <laughs> and, and, and she's sitting there going so what would you like me to read and Jason's going anything you like and I'm sitting there going yeah but it's the voice we're interested in Jason not the tits <laughs> and uh so it was a good thing that we were able to tape everything because then we could go home and he'd go, oh, she was brilliant. And we were going, listen to the voice. And it was all on a monotone. And even Jason would then go, oh, nice tits, shame about the voice. 